In Magic the Gathering, there are a few different ways you might not be having a good time. It could be because one of your opponents is way ahead on board and you didn't pack any outs for this situation. It could be because one of the people you play with isn't fitting in with this group's social contract, and it causes friction with their deck choices. It could be that your favorite format isn't very healthy, and could use either some bans or some rule changes. Looking at Magic the Gathering, there are some different places that might have problems. When we look at solving them, though, it is important that we keep in mind the best solutions are usually ones that narrowly address issues at the same level. I'm Alex, today's Spike on the Mic, and today I want to chat with you all about my own thoughts on identifying which type of problem you might have so that it can be addressed efficiently. Before we jump in, I want to make it clear that I'm not Jim, I'm not on the CAG, and this isn't a script I'm reading for him. Based on the scripts he's written, he'll be back soon, but I'll be on the series occasionally, at least when I think I've got a decent topic to chat about. Back to the issue of addressing issues. Problems can come in a range of sizes, from individual game situations all the way up to format impacting disasters. When we've been looking at problems recently, one of the frameworks I've been keeping in mind is the separation between card problems, meta problems, and format problems, as well as trying to sort out the equitable levels of solutions. In my mind, a card problem is generally a situation or circumstance that arises in a game of magic directly that doesn't carry with it any social implications. It only exists in the game, and while it can be thought about both before and after the game, it doesn't have impact unless the card or game state in question comes about. The overwhelming majority of card problems take the shape of things that will prevent you from winning the game you're playing. Generally speaking, this is the layer at which we start to see our first clash between misidentified problems and proposed solutions. Have you ever had someone tell you the old deck building canard when you've complained about a game piece or a strategy? Run more removal! The reason they think this is good advice is they believe you to have a card problem. You encountered a situation, it could have been solved with another type of card, seems like an easy fix, right? Well, as I'm sure you're all aware, very rarely is that the type of advice being sought by someone making such a complaint. What they're really saying isn't, I cannot solve this game puzzle. They're saying, I do not enjoy facing this type of situation in my meta. Not everyone is interested in playing against stacks. Some folks hate group hug. I personally dislike decks that aren't guaranteed to win when they storm off or have a very long, complicated turn. In each statement, even though cards are involved, the problem being described is one of mismatched games. Folks in those games had a miscommunication before the game even started, or someone introduced an issue with the metagame of the pod, which is a handy way of describing the second and widest level of issues that arise, the meta problem. A meta problem is any situation that requires non-game actions to address the issue performed by the folks that would be involved in the games. This is talking to the stacks player in your LGS about considering building another deck, this is asking folks to play faster when it's getting late. Meta problems look to address in-game behaviors and out-of-game choices that affect the quality of your game. In tournament formats, most meta problems are addressed using a combination of the Magic Tournament rules and the Infraction Procedure Guide, or judging it regular document if it's a non-competitive tournament. They address communications, expectations, and even how to effectively deal with unwanted behaviors. By and large, the nature of tournament formats leads to a Win is the thing mentality, and it's generally treated as the core ideal of such matters. It's a bit different in Commander in that very few pieces of format philosophy require things of your meta. Rule Zero itself is designed to allow prey groups to handle meta issues as they collectively see fit, rather than setting infractions or punishments in stone. This is part of what allows Commander to be casual and more freeform to different play groups. I think there is a sizable portion of the EDH player base that is completely incompatible with nearly any local meta that exists. While quote-unquote mainline LGS commander can probably be said to have the largest and most broad appeal, it's not the preferred way to play for a ton of folks as they're looking for something slightly different out of their games. Take CEDH as an example. A CEDH player in an LGS meta would likely be a bit miserable most of the time. They'd like to play efficient, interactive, high-power games against similarly-minded folk and decks. Generally speaking, this isn't something that most shop metas look to encourage or promote. And the CEDH player will typically find themselves asked to power down or choose other decks for the rest of the pod's enjoyment. 
In this example, the CEDH player might be tempted to change some cards around, play their high power strategies suboptimally to avoid social pressure, or even change the types of strategies they bring to the table. While this would help the other players have a better time, the CDH player might not enjoy the end state of that meta. In this example, the answer is to find a new group of similarly minded players, or convince through advocacy a subgroup of players at the shop to intentionally play at that level. In any case, this meta mismatch, while it can be partially addressed by using different cards, won't be fully addressed until a meta level solution has been applied. That said, I have seen some folks call for bannings of things like fast mana, aggressive cheap combos, and even some pieces as innocuous as hate bears to address their meta issues. This brings us to our final and, frankly, most narrow level, format problems. A format problem is fairly simple to describe. It is something that the format you're playing with is dealing as a whole. Sometimes it's an overtly powerful card or strategy without meaningful counterplay. Sometimes it's the outsized price of mandatory cards that push players away from playing the format. Sometimes it's watching a mono-red burn deck splash into Teamer for a certain Thief of Crowns. <laughs> format problems are generally the domain of wizards to solve. For the vast majority of tournament formats, it takes the shape of bans. It can occasionally take the shape of rules changes as well. For example, the recent companion change was a format solution to a format problem. However, the single biggest source of frustration, in my opinion, in speaking with Magic players is misidentifying a card or meta problem as a format problem. As someone who shares a Discord with a member of the CAG, I frequently read about issues that are arising in various folks' playgroups. Now, don't get me wrong here. There are situations or cards that can be more than one type of problem at once. In fact, I think repeated card problems can eventually lead to meta problems. That said, it is typically pretty rare that a meta problem rises to the level of a format problem. Let me show you why. Let's say that Wizards prints a new commander that allows for a very undisruptible win state, but only if you control a sizable set of other permanents. They're very difficult to assemble even with powerful support effects, and generally, the deck wins uninterrupted around turn 6. For many, this card would destroy their battlecruiser metas, wreak untold havoc, make game night a real bad time, but for others it wouldn't even be considered interesting, let alone good, and would be dismissed in favor of something more powerful and efficient. But for some folks in the middle, this would be a fun build-around challenge that would likely take both planning and skill in an environment where such ideas are encouraged and challenged on the table. Ultimately, while this may represent a meta problem for the first group, it's nearly irrelevant in the second group and super fun in the third. So what happens if a member of the first group goes on the internet and talks about this brand new super broken unfair deck that just beat them last Saturday? To this person, they might feel like it is a huge format problem especially if their meta won't entertain any local solutions to it. From this example, I hope you can see the myriad issues and spirals that plague online magic discourse, especially in the EDH scene. For the vast majority of current complaints, there is going to be a sizable group of playgroups and players for a change, and a generally an appreciable number against. To say nothing of the hordes of folks who just don't care very much. While not every change at a format level has to be positive for every single meta that plays the format, it is something to be kept in mind to maximize the positivity that can happen, while addressing meta problems as locally as possible. Since the RC isn't in the business of rewriting the MTR or coming up with a 300 plus card ban list, they leave most of the meta crafting of the format to the players themselves via Rule Zero. I've seen and heard recently that Rule Zero can't be relied upon to get to the game you want and that it represents too big of an ask. The thing that confounds me about such statements is that they are then followed by a request for a format-wide adjustment that would impact every meta and every player of the game. I'm not saying that your personal experiences are invalid, or that you might not have issues finding the types of games you want to play. I can understand that perfectly well. At the end of the day, though, folks wanting to play rares in Popper are going to have an uphill battle trying to find that kind of meta just like folks shouldn't force you to play against decks and strategies that you don't want to, asking everyone in the format to change seems like an unreasonable ask in the vast majority of situations. Next time you're looking at an issue that you want to solve, try looking at the level it rises to. Try to be as close to the ground as you can. Very few issues ever rise to the level of format problem, so if you're going to ask for that level of solution, 
be prepared to show how your issue merits that intervention and doesn't cause other problems, even if they wouldn't be problems for you personally. That's all for today. Do you have examples of how this framework could apply in your meta? Any examples of creative solutions you've come up with? Drop them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Alex. I've been your Spike on the Mic. Thanks for listening. Hey, thank you for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you close the window. Or you can click on this link to check out our other great videos.